Jedi like confidence. Can you all see my beautiful picture of Luke Skywalker about um, about to chop a girl in the ass with his lightsaber? Can you see it? Just somebody um, reply yes, if you can. And that'll be probably the last time. Yeah, nice. Nice. I don't think you guys can chat with each other. That's rather unfortunate. That would be really cool if you guys could talk to each other, but I haven't found the function down in the chat anywhere. Here's the chat. Yeah. Anyway... Okay, guys, Jedi like confidence. So the reason I chose Jedi like confidence as the theme of this webinar is because obviously the new Star Wars movie is coming out, and I don't know how many of you guys are nerds, but I'm a nerd. I mean, I'm a nerd with all of my interest, interests. When I got into seduction, I went into it with a nerdy passion, almost like I had discovered the new... 13 sided die for my role playing game and 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 so you know I I just thought Star Wars was a fitting theme because the force is is when you have a when you have when you have game when you're in the zone it feels a lot like you're using the force or something let's look at this picture so does this girl actually think she stands a chance against Luke Skywalker i mean she has a fucking stick you know, R2, uh, R2D2 sitting back there just videotaping, you know, taping the whole thing and put, making a hologram out of that. But she's fucked. She's, she, doesn't, she doesn't stand a chance. Like, if you're a Jedi, you pretty, you know, no girl really should stand a chance against you unless she is also a Jedi. And there are female Jedis out there. And, but this girl is not going to win this fight, in my opinion. Here we go. Who the heck is Tony D? That's me right there. Uh, for those of you who've never, you know, maybe you've got this link from a friend or you saw it on Facebook or something, I'll just tell you quickly about who I am and what I do. So back around 2006, I, I was a pathetic little uh, insecure guy with man boobs. I actually had a syndrome called gynecomastia, which are, um, you know, the enlargements of the breast gland. And I had boobs. They weren't huge, but they were they were fucking tits and it was pretty devastating to my self-esteem not to mention I grew up in a household with only women my mom and my two sisters because my father wasn't quite a deadbeat but he, he just wasn't around I didn't have any male role models that were any use to me at all I mean there were a, there were a few guys in my mom in my mom's life and in my life that taught me a few masculine skills like how to ride a motorcycle, how to shoot a gun. And I did get to do a few, like I did learn stuff from these guys. But um, when I came into the age, you know, around 13, 14, 15, when I started becoming interested in women, I didn't have anyone, no older brothers, no men in my life to teach me anything about women. And the only reason I ever got laid was because I played in punk rock bands. And, and so women would come and they would approach me after my show and, and, talk to me and only by making it very 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 clear that they wanted to hook up with me would I actually do anything about it like it's almost like if someone came and put a hot girl on your lap and just sat there and told you you have to kiss her you have to kiss her you have to kiss her or something like that like that's basically what the women would do to me until I figured it out and it, and really my problems stemmed from a deep deep insecurity and a deep lack of experience but I always had that drive I did have that ambition that I wanted beautiful women and so I, I did get a few in those years but anyway uh, fast forward to, to when I was 27 years old 10 years ago I got liposuction and it was probably one of the best decisions of my life just to increase my confidence by changing what I could I, like actually changing what I what I could change a lot of guys are really insecure about their looks. They come to me and they're insecure about things like their skin color or their height or uh, things that they can't change. Now, I think if you're going to get, if you know, a, a guy who's insecure about his skin color, like he shouldn't go the route of Michael Jackson and go dye his skin or something like that's outrageous. But if you can 
fix something like like the problem I had simply by uh, you know having a thousand dollar surgery, which is not a big deal at all to get rid of enlarged breast glands. Why not? It helped. You know, I'm never against women who want to get boob jobs either. Either I think if that will help them and make them happier, then why not? But anyway, I got this surgery, and right after that, I found the pickup artist community. And this was back around 2007, so the game had just come out two years earlier, and the community was still really focused on this old school con, these old old school concepts, negs, DHVs, uh, push pull, teasing, kino, storytelling, and uh, NLP was really popular and all this stuff. So I actually did study and learn all of that old school stuff that was kind of forgotten with this new wave of of uh, pickup artistry, which was really driven forward by companies like Real Social Dynamics and and other other guys, including myself. Like I'm obviously not famous like those guys are, but. I was really into improvisation, state-based game. So that's getting, you know, internally motivated and, be, and and creating your own content rather than relying on memorized lines and whatnot. Because I actually found a lot of, I found it really fun to go out and just improvise just to see what would, hap- what would happen. Because I do kind of have the gift of being able to perform uh, or the desire to perform. I think that's something that guys who are really good at game, who get really good at it, uh, they have a desire to perform and guys who don't have that desire to perform, they haven't played in bands. They haven't you know, made indie films. They have, they're not artists so much. They don't really seem to do as well, but they can improve themselves if they decide to focus on that aspect of themselves and bring out that performer. Anyway, so I started working for a pickup company in Vancouver, BC, after spending about two years in Montreal running around bars and clubs for literally every night for two years. I went out so much. Uh, it was I would work eight hours a day and then come home, take a nap, and go out till 1 or 2 a.m. and come home and go to bed, get up at 9 a.m. and go to work. And I worked in call centers in Montreal. But t- to me, game was fascinating. Like I really wanted to improve my life. I really wanted wanted to date hotter girls. And this picture is actually me and um, a girl, a girl I was hanging out with in Thailand last year. Um, and like I think this girl was really beautiful. I'm not going to get into details of our relationship, but um, I'm at this point in my life where I. I think I have Jedi like confidence with women and by Jedi like, I just mean like I don't have any fear of approaching or meeting or talking to beautiful women anywhere. Like you could take me into a bar and there might be 15 people, a mixed group of men and women sitting at a table behind the bartender. And whereas most guys would go like, what's the strategy? I can go right in there. I can start talking to people. I can get in there and get to know everybody in that group without feeling any anxiety or fear. And that's what I mean by a Jedi level of confidence. It's not necessarily like a um, like like a Jedi mind. Like I'm not teaching you how to have a Jedi mind control trick or something that will you know convince women to sleep with you. But when you do have a Jedi like levels of confidence, you almost do have you you can almost develop a Jedi like power of influence as well and charm, um, which is something we're going to talk about in this in this seminar. Yeah. And so anyway, to finish my story, I then became my own coach after interning for this guy for a few years. I didn't like it, started my own company. And it's a lot. Uh, ever since then, I've been working for myself. I'm a self-made pickup teacher, attraction coach, whatever the hell you want to call me. The state paradox. Look at that. Look at that lightsaber. This this picture really, uh, I, it reminds me of so many of my students, so many guys that come to me. I've been teaching boot camps for six years now, and so many guys come to me like this. They're at this stage where they are on the path to becoming a Jedi, but their lightsaber is just like flaccid. Um, it's a picture here of Darth Vader with a flaccid lightsaber. Um, they know they should be confident. They know they should, you know, they should be strong, but they're not. It's like they're wearing a suit of armor over top of jelly. Like they don't have the strength inside, but they, they're learning how to have that strength by pretending using the fake it till you make, fake it till you'll make it, uh, analogy, the state paradox, how to seem confident when you're totally not in the beginning, 
when clients come to me and they want to increase their confidence, I get them for, I start off first by making them look confident because if I can change the way they walk and change the way they talk and change the way they dress and all of that and, and make them move and look like a confident person, then that's the, a good step to get them feeling like one. But yeah, the paradox. Oh, I'm getting a text message. Nice. Okay. What the hell does anxiety even look like? We're going to go straight into talking about anxiety, okay? Because anxiety is the big problem that every guy has. Most guys have two problems. One, they don't know what to say. And two, they have anxiety. And it's usually manifesting in approach anxiety or post-approach anxiety. So either they're afraid of approaching a girl or once they do approach the girl, they start to have anxiety. And Jedis do not have this problem. I mean, you... you they might feel a flutter of fear if they face like Django, uh, Boba Fett and his minions or something. But, um, <laughs> I love this Jedi shit, but they don't, they don't really, they aren't going to look like this guy, which is, you know, a, a scared man with a lot of anxiety. So, you know, look at this guy. So we've got these different manifest manifestations of anxiety and some of these are mental manifestations like internal dialogue type manifestations and others are external and if you guys have been doing pickup at all if you've tried you've experienced this so a sense of dread oh jesus i have to go and do some uh, direct game on this girl or oh that girl in the bar she's with a bunch of guys and i have to get in there and you know it's just that actual anticipation of the event it sucks right shaky so your body will actually manifest physical anxiety symptoms you'll get shaky um you see you'll you know you've experienced this you've seen it in your friends you'll feel faint you'll have choking rapid heartbeat the rapid heartbeat is one of the largest manifestations of anxiety just that heart will just start pounding and the blood that's going i have a theory that the blood that's going towards your heart to make it pump that way is actually taking blood away from your brain and that's why you can't come up with things to say even though you've read every fucking pickup book in the world you've read every self-help book you've read all the books on body language you've seen the dvds on confidence and if you guys haven't you probably will because you are into this stuff now you've taken the pill so you will eventually start watching all of these youtube videos and whatnot but yeah the rapid heart wobbly legs yeah anxiety so because of women seriously guys this is not normal behavior i tell a lot of my students who come to me for help. Most of them are normal dudes. They're successful dudes. They have good jobs. Most of them are not weird looking or maybe they dress poorly, but most guys that come to me are really awesome, normal dudes. And they're afraid of approaching women. And you know what? It's time to rehabilitate. This isn't, I don't think pickup necessarily is something that you acquire. It's more like something you have and you need to rehabilitate yourself out of the damage that has been done to you somehow. Who why didn't your father teach you this shit? Why didn't society give you this confidence? Uh, this seminar, this webinar particularly is about confidence. I'm not so much going to dive into other topics like verbal game or um, physical game or any of this stuff because it's only one seminar. Maybe next time, but I'm going to focus on confidence. So here are some more manifestations of anxiety. The biggest manifestation of anxiety is the in internal chatter. Just being overly self-conscious. Self-consciousness. So how do I explain this? Being conscious is a good thing. Being conscious means to be awake. I would say the majority of our society is walking around in a sort of waking dream. Like they're totally unconscious to the nature of reality. They're unconscious of social dynamics and the power that they have to improve themselves, the power that they could have to excel in everything they do, to make more money, to have uh, better lovers, to have better sex, to be fucking awesome. And they just settle for mediocrity. And one of the, you know, one of the, I call these people muggles. Okay. So muggles are people who don't believe in magic. They don't believe in Hogwarts. Uh, and they think they look like this guy. They look just like stressed out and sad, and and they're thinking all the time about their work, their their expectations, their bills, their um, 
internal dialogue is insane. Being overly self-conscious is really going to fuck up your game big time because like say you're going in to approach a girl and you're thinking, um, how, how do I look? How's my hair? Oh God, I should have got a haircut. If only I had new jeans. Um, I just don't know what to say. Like you're already defeating yourself. That's the eternal chatter. I call it the ego. The ego is constantly pinging, pinging, pinging other people for approval. You might, you know, um, it's always asking, is that true? Is that true? Now the ego is something I could do a whole nother webinar on. I'm not going to stick on this for this whole presentation, but it's a really fascinating uh, subject for me, the ego. When I started, when I, I think the first product I ever saw about ego was The Blueprint by RSD, by Tyler, Tyler Durden. And you should all watch this. The, the Blueprint is, is an amazing product, but step one to becoming like Jedi-like in your confidence is to recognize the ego and what and how it operates and understand your ego as if, you are a car, learn, uh, you just bought a new car and you're learning how to drive it. Like you're learning how to use the steering wheel. You should understand your ego and what its function is and, and how it's affecting you. But it mostly manifests like this in a lot of different thoughts that are coming and going all the time, but you're never really stuck on any one of them. It's almost like your brain is constantly going, constantly chattering with all these fears, doubts, insecurities, um, anxieties, worries, and all this. And, and you never really... Most people never really stop and just become present. And when you learn how to stop that chatter and just become present, you will have social power like you wouldn't believe. People can tell when you're uh, when you have that power. The mind-body link. So when your brain starts going with this anxiety, like say I send you in to uh, approach a girl on the street, and your brain starts going like, what do I say? What do I do? Oh well, what about her body language? And you start thinking like this that it's almost like a hamster running in a wheel and it just it'll just perpetuate and go faster and faster and and that will cause your heart to start beating boom 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 like in that picture i showed you and so the mind body link is just that your heart rate will affect your mind and your mind will affect your heart rate and it's just a never ending cycle and what happens is most guys actually become physically stuck they can't even move their legs they can't open their mouth and push air through their lungs and when I'm, te when I'm teaching guys like this that are having this problem and an anxiety attack is what it is I actually have to hypnotize them on the street and I'll show you uh, later on in the webinar how you can hypnotize yourself on the street to stop this cycle you have to either stop the mind from freaking out or stop the body from freaking out uh, because if you stop one you'll stop the other yeah weird thoughts um, you just think people who are having a lot of anxiety in their life, they just become paranoid. They just become weird. You'll have weird body language, like nervous tics. You know, some guys, while they're talking to women, they'll sit there and play with their hands and they'll kind of crack their knuckles or they'll scratch their chins or, or, or pick at themselves like monkeys. And they don't even notice that they're doing it. I would say if you go out to do some, some game and you're learning, maybe get a friend to videotape you with their phone just so that you can see the strange body language that you might have that you wouldn't notice in the present moment. And the reason that most guys don't even notice they're, they're doing these things is because they're not present. It's because their brain is going a million miles an hour and, and they're not really there present with the girl and, and knowing what's going on in that moment. They can't even recognize that they're doing these weird things. Yeah, you get tunnel vision. So I, I always use this metaphor of a straw. So a lot of guys who are new, it's almost like when they're doing pickup, it's like they're even advanced guys. I mean, sometimes it's like you're walking through a dark tunnel and there's all this rubble in front of you and you, all you have is this, this straw, this little straw, and you're looking through it at the light at the end of the tunnel and you're bumping into tires, you're bumping into, you're tripping over cars, you're just, it's really fucking hard to get through that tunnel. And your brain's going a million miles an hour because you're not ego aware. And when you finally get out and you realize you've survived, that straw opens up a little bit. It becomes a little bit wider. Now, a Jedi who's in touch with the Force, they their awareness is 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 vast. Like when you guys, if you guys came out with me to do some pickup, 
I would, I would point out a girl and be like, see that Russian girl over there? She's really open to meeting somebody. And people who have gamed with me, they know. They, they've seen me do this. And I'll send them in to talk to a girl, and she will be Russian, and she will be open to meeting guys. And, and the reason that I'm able to do this, and, and they didn't even notice this girl, most of my students, because they're so in their head with the chatter, the chirping going on, that their, their straw is so tight that they don't see these things. And it, there's no magic pill to give you this uh, increased awareness, this increased perception. All, all you can do is gain this through experience and become aware that it's happening and trust the process. Look at Yoda. Oh man, I'm so stoked for this new Star Wars movie. I hope it doesn't suck like uh, fucking Lucas just destroyed the franchise. Um, and hopefully J.J. Abrams will will fix it all for us. Yoda says, fear is the path to the dark side. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. Um, yeah, pretty self-explanatory. Thanks, Yoda. Fear, anger, and doubt. We have a little picture of Luke here looking up through his burnt out mask. You want to, here's the thing, all this anxiety and doubt and fear that most guys have in the game, a lot of it is just because they're not acknowledging that they have it. It's like guys are trying to trick themselves into not being afraid instead of just acknowledging that they are afraid. Sometimes I have guys on program and they're like, look, Tony, you don't understand me the way I am. And they'll start telling me about their childhood and they'll start telling me stories about the girls that they dated or, or they'll make excuses and say, I'm not really attracted to white girls. I only like black girls or they make up these stories. And after I, after I get through all this garbage and, and then and I'll start asking them a lot of questions and it always comes down to them being afraid. And especially, you know, a lot of my students are successful guys. They're lawyers, doctors, like successful guys. And for them to admit they're afraid is really hard. But when they do admit that most of their problems with women are coming from fear, a fear of not be being enough, a fear of, you know, some insecurity or just a fear of the anxiety caused by approaching them, once they recognize that they're afraid, uh, it's, it becomes a lot easier to deal with. You know, like Luke in the movie, in the original Star Wars, when he went into that tunnel to face whatever creature was in there, uh, he he was actually facing himself. And that was the metaphor. And, he, you know, when he, when he went to attack his fear with anger, he killed himself, basically. So what you want to do is open yourself up to the fear and not be ashamed of that at all. Just say, yeah, I'm afraid of I'm afraid of approaching that sick set of girls over there because it's making my heart pound and I don't want to embarrass myself. And I think that I've got maybe fucked up teeth. And just acknowledge all of your fears because at least then you know what you have to work what you have to work towards. You know what limiting beliefs you have to conquer and which of these might be real issues that you could fix. So don't run from your pain. Immerse yourself in the fear. People are, if you're afraid of heights, you know, easier said than done, you know, that you should just go and go up in an airplane and jump out. Like, there's a combination of ways you could attack that fear, fear of heights, but that would probably be the best way to overcome a fear of heights really quickly would be to take skydiving lessons, right? If you're afraid of sharks, maybe you should go swim with some sharks or whatever. But if you're afraid of women, obviously you have to go and approach as many women as possible over the next few years in order to get rid of this irrational fear. Immerse yourself in it. So many guys, they they come to me and they want help and I give them a regimen. They, they pay me like, you know, a few thousand dollars for a boot camp and I pour my heart into teaching them and then they go off into their world and they practice like once a week or, you know, they do a half-assed approach on a Tuesday and they wonder why they're not getting any res results. And they say, well, I want motivation. I need to change this about my life. You don't need anything, guy. What you need to do is go and do it all as often as possible. Face your goddamn fear. And this often comes from the issue of guys not admitting that they're afraid. They're just thinking that they haven't found the right seduction product. It's just admit that you're afraid and then go take actions to address that fear by putting yourself in those situations. Combine meditation and inner game work with practical technique. 
I find meditation to be so powerful. It's one of the greatest discoveries of my life. Um, now, if you, you, I don't know how, how many of you guys meditate or do yoga. I know a lot of you do, but if you don't do any sort of meditation, you know, at least try yoga or tai chi or something that helps you just calm your mind, because this this chatter, this egoic um, noise that's going on in your head all the time. If that's going on while you're trying to pick up a girl, you probably won't pick up that girl. So you don't even know, you might not even know what it feels like to be present, at least in meditation, which I do teach in some of my blog posts. And I have a video online on my YouTube account, which I can link to later. I do teach meditation classes, but just go to YouTube at least and look up meditation and learn some techniques to meditate. You only need to dedicate 10 minutes a day, 10 fucking minutes, and you you will at least experience a little bit of what it feels like to be present. I meditate about 30 minutes a day, sometimes 40 minutes a day, and I usually do it in two sessions. Whenever, whenever I start feeling depressed or anxiety, uh, I do this, but... I think one of the greatest meditations is actually to be present and in set with a beautiful girl. When th this this doesn't really happen for newbies because you have too much anxiety and your straw is so small you don't know what to do yet you don't have the experience. But when you become more advanced with this stuff, when you're locked into like a really intense flirtation with a beautiful girl, it's almost like you feel that bubble come around you and everything else is blocked out. All the noises of the environment seem to disappear and, and lower and it's just you and her exchanging this sort of sexual and intellectual chemistry. That is a meditation in a way. It's almost like a shared meditation. I guess you could um, – I've never done this acro yoga where you share the yoga with a woman, but I want to try some of that. And I think that might be a physical way to – experience this this sort of dual meditation but most of you guys should be practicing this at least once a day just get down and find out what it feels like to be present and then go out and use the practical technique of actually approaching women do them both not just one train 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 yeah um i can't emphasize enough that if you guys want to have be it to be masters of state control, to be masters of presence, to be masters at pickup or whatever it is, you need to fucking practice a lot, not once a week or twice a week. Now, after you put in the time, you can relax on it. And, and you know, I know a lot of you guys are entrepreneurs. A lot of you guys are in really good shape. You work out a lot and you have your passions and pickup can't just be your only passion. Most guys end up with a girlfriend, a girlfriend anyway at some point. but if you want to be a Jedi, a social Jedi, then you do need to practice. Yeah. And confidence is something that you get from experience. I mean, I, th I think it, it amazes me how many guys just don't believe this. And that's why I have to repeat it over and over that you need a lot of experience to become this way. Yes. How to become a Jedi. Forget that shit about midi-chlorians. We can all be Jedi. Midi-chlorians, what was he thinking? He took Lucas took this whole idea, that the original idea that anyone could be a Jedi if they studied or they were chosen by God or something. But now it's like, no, you have to have the right blood. You have to have the right DNA to be a Jedi. Forget that shit. Look at this kitty. You can be a Jedi. Let's talk about a different concept, Mushin. So... I was really thinking, like, how could an average man embody a social Jedi? What sort of philosophy would help him? And Mushin Notion uh, is a great example of this. Samurai. Samurai philosophy. Buddhist philosophy. Mushin is a mental state achieved by highly trained martial art artists, otherwise known as no mind. It's also referred to as state or flow or being in the zone. Um, yeah, this is like... This is it right here, guys. Mushin. Mushin notion. That means, uh, like, uh, no mind. Yeah. When you have mushin, when you found mushin, you're not attached to any specific thought, emotion, or outcome. Wow. I mean, just imagine yourself for a second. You've probably all been there at some point in your life, whether if you're a musician or some kind of artist or uh, an athlete or 
uh, even an entrepreneur, at some point you've you've done something that you were so good at, and and it put you in that state of motion, and you weren't thinking about anything else. This happens with pickup. It's really an amazing experience when you are in state, when you're in the zone. Um, it's an amazing experience. You just don't have discursive thoughts. Discursive are just scattered thoughts, sort of like what I was showing you with the ego. Now, if you want to lose the discursive thoughts, it's easy. First of all, become aware of them. Most people are walking around with this chatter going on all the time, and they're not even aware of it. I'm a writer, so I have this this thing I do. I carry around a little notepad, and I make all my clients get a notepad and a pen. If you've worked with me, and I know a few of you guys have, if you carry a notepad and a pen, and a pen on you, or at the very least, use your cell phone. When you catch yourself sometimes, when you're having these ideas during the day that most of us waste, they just come in and out, in and out. And we have great ideas all day long and we don't keep any of them. It's just discursive thoughts. But if you if you catch one of those thoughts and you think that's a really good thought or a really good question, just fucking write it down. In the long run, if you write down those thoughts, I mean, you could become a writer, but this will help your game, especially if you think of something witty to say or you think of an interesting date idea or anything or some art concept, write that shit down and then at least make those thoughts useful. If you can't become present and just clear your mind, at least keep those thoughts. Mushin, the samurai, the fighter, the Jedi, they rely on intuition rather than technique. Now, this is a state that you want to get to. First, you practice technique and then you will reach an intuitive understanding of the, of the concepts. So, so many new guys, they want to go straight into intuition. Oh, you know, like they want to just be natural. And a lot of the pickup community and the dating community, they shit all over technique. They say, you know, you shouldn't memorize lines. It's, it's you know, it's, it's a band-aid covering a gaping wound. And we have all these cliches. But honestly, you guys, if you're struggling with what to say, I would say you should memorize some routines. Or, you, you know, like I make my students do simple exercises like going out and uh, – just making physical contact with a girl in the daytime, and it might be a hand on the shoulder. And I'll make them do that, do that 20, 30 times just so that it becomes an ingrained habit to make physical contact. If I take you out to a club, I have an exercise where you have to grab a girl around the waist after she's accepted your approach and pick her up and spin her around in a circle. And I'll make them do that 10, 20 times so that that becomes an unconscious technique that you can go to and it becomes more of an intuition because when you're you're getting compl when you're out getting compliance from a lot of women at first it seems really awkward to get compliance from a girl because you don't want to intrude or you, you have doubts you have this chatter going on but when you're in the zone when you have motion and you have experience you have volumes of experience behind you doing something like spinning a girl around or or going for a makeout you don't even really need to think about it. You can just feel it, and you know it's going to happen. And if it doesn't happen, you just adapt anyway. But you don't put a lot of thought into it. Yeah, your actions are no longer determined by anger, fear, or ego. Think about that. How many, how, like, if you go out at night tonight, um, or go out on Friday, or you go out for some day game, just pay attention to how much of this is going on inside you document it go from one to ten how busy is my mind what emotions are you feeling like if you're feeling anxiety fear anger write that down i'm today i'm feeling well, nine out of ten anger that i am not better at this um, really document your emotions and this will help to bring awareness to what's going on inside of you so that you can you can um, become better at this stuff yeah, so a lot of people think that this Zen shit is just like a really deep state of relaxation, sort of like meditation. Meditation can be a state of deep relaxation, but when you're doing pickup, especially at night, often it's a high energy activity. It doesn't seem very motion at all. It doesn't seem very Jedi like at all. Jedi is, if you look at think of a Jedi, he seems rather stoic. A Jedi might seem rather stoic, not they they don't seem like that exciting of people. Like you wouldn't really want to go party with Obi Wan Kenobi, maybe, but, but um, but that's not the case when it comes to these activities. A martial artist, when he's in combat, is very animated. His mind can be very accelerated. 
you're you're able to sense things before they happen. When you're a good when you're good at pickup, and especially if you're in a bar and there's all this music and noise and lights and and you know you want to be the fun guy, you want to be the party. That's not really a Zen state. You don't have to be deeply relaxed to be in motion. But as long as you're doing the activity that that you have practiced that you're good at, you can be in that state. Think of a rock star up on stage playing like a badass drum solo. That is like a perfect example of a state of motion. Yeah. Masters of motion might come to understand the uselessness of technique altogether. You hear this from a lot of uh, old pickup guys from the early 2000s. Even now you have guys like um, Neil Strauss, for example, coming out with his new book, The Truth, which the media is like all over being like, we told you so, relationships are better. Uh, anyway, I, that's a whole other topic, isn't it? Um, I think that Neil Strauss is just coming to actually become a master. He's been at this now 15 years, this whole lifestyle of his, and he, he's come to a, some new realizations. And it's not that the pickup stuff he learned was bad. It's just, just that now he doesn't need technique like he used to. He's married and he has a new game to play. That's all that is. It's a new game to play. Whatever game you guys are deciding on, whether that's to learn pickup or to start a business or to find a girlfriend, there's no proper way. But when you master one, you, you just evolve to the next level. And you a lot of guys will look back and go like, oh, that that's PUA stuff from the game. It was totally weird and dumb and useless. And you just need to be natural. You just need to be natural. Like I used to be this guy. And I'm actually, I'm actually a big fan of technique now. Like I actually teach very specific techniques um, to guys in the beginning because it'll help them to understand bigger concepts. But actually to become uh, a master, you just have to do something a lot and be open to change. And it takes a long time and you might eventually just drop all the technique. And that's kind of where you want to get to, where you just react instinctively, intuitively to the situation. Yeah, newbies and intermediates must learn technique before motion is possible. Uh, you can't go and become a Jedi just because you have a lightsaber. You still have to go to Dagobah and uh, ride around and suck Yoda's little dick and, and all that for many, many years. The benefits of motion influence personal power, strength, charm, and charisma. Yeah, it's pr that's pretty much it. Motion is not. A game is not something that you just use to pick up girls. I'm sure you guys know this, but if you ha if you don't if you haven't gone through the process of actually learning this stuff and putting years of effort into it, then you won't actually know the truth of this. But you guys in here that have transformed yourself, you know that this spills out into every aspect of your life. I mean, I wouldn't be here doing this webinar if it wasn't for motion because I hate computer software. I it took me forever to figure out how to even make this PowerPoint program, but I used the concept of motion in that I was going I became present with learning the software. And that steep learning curve actually put me into my flow state, figuring out all the broken aspects of the software and overcoming them increased my self-esteem and put me in the moment. So after this program is done, I'll be able to do a better presentation next time. I'll I'll listen to it and I'll become more engaging, more entertaining. This is what it was like when I was learning game. I found that after I went out for uh, six months, almost every night practicing, that I started to do better at work because instead of being like, oh, fuck, I have to go to work, um, I would find the problems at work intriguing. How could I increase my sales at work? How could I fix this problem instead of asking for help, fix it myself? And my bosses started to notice and when they would ask me questions and I would use everything I learned from pickup about vocal projection, about, you know, having strong body language. And I, I was dressing better that when I would talk to my boss in front of the other staff members, they noticed that and I started getting promoted. And so this stuff is really powerful. Yeah. It's good for your mental and physical health because um, you can even look at exercise in the same way as game. You can see learning exercises, just figuring out a series of systems and techniques. And I have some friends uh, that are in such amazing shape. It just fucking blows my mind. And those guys actually learn pickup really easily. 
just because they've been through the process of learning, uh, of mastering something. And so it's not only your physical health that can improve because of this stuff. It's also your mental health, uh, because you're learning how to be, how to calm your mind. You're learning how to be present with a girl and to not have any strange emotions coming up that are going to freak her out. Remember the law of state transference, whatever you feel, she feels. So if you feel this anxiety, she is going to feel that anxiety. If she has anxiety and you are calm and present and in the zone, her state will generally come to match your own as women are usually following the the leader you know men are usually weaker men will also follow the stronger leader and so you'll find a lot of people aren't if you learn game and you learn motion a lot of people in society they can't compete and you end up just elevating yourself to higher social statuses just because yeah you learn to be decisive in game you have to be decisive you have to know when to it's not even knowing it's more of a feeling but when to kiss her, when to try to get her out of the bar and get her home. Um, just learning this stuff made me more decisive in all aspects of my life. I remember when I decided to move to Montreal, that was a huge decision. I quit my job back in 2007. I had a good career job and I just quit it and I went to Montreal and I said, I'm going to learn pickup. And I spent two years there learning, just practicing. And that was something I'd never done before was just make a decisive decision about changing my entire life plan. And uh, I'm glad I did it, and I'm glad you guys are here doing it too. Yeah, increased focus at work, at work and in life. Oh man, awareness is something that I'm really into these days. When you look, when you start meditating, and if you're doing a lot of game or you're involved in martial arts, and these concepts start to gel, you will start to notice opportunities everywhere. Uh, when I take guys out that are somewhat new at this stuff to do day game they are always missing opportunities. Like one of the games I give guys is to give five high fives or uh, what's a better one. Just yeah. Well, five high fives. I go, okay, you have two minutes to get five high fives from five girls. <laughs> and this is probably one of the hardest exercises, even for people who have been doing this stuff for a few years, they can go and go direct on a girl. No problem. Okay. Hi, I just saw you. I thought you were cute and that's cool. But when I ask them to get five high fives within two minutes, they just can't do it. And what will happen is their awareness will shrink as their um, the, the verbosity of their mind increases. So when, as the chatter increases, it's like this. Oh, I, oh, she's with somebody. Oh, well, that girl's a bit – she looks a bit bitchy. Well, that one has her headphones in. As soon as that starts up, their awareness, the straw just shrinks. And they miss so many opportunities where I'll be standing there and I will have already high five seven girls. Sometimes I'll get guys to time me and I will get high five high fives in, in literally eight seconds. I'll be like, boom, 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 boom. And, and it's pretty amazing to see that happen. But as you get better at this stuff, you'll see more opportunity. When you walk into a coffee shop, you'll see that girl that's open to you. When you, when you go to the bar, you'll, you'll see the group that you could go and befriend you, when you're in business, you'll see the guy that you can close, that you can make a sale with. You'll see the person that could hire you. And so this stuff is so powerful. Again, less reliance on technique and more on intuition. See, I'm repeating shit because this is my first PowerPoint presentation. Better game. Overall, you learn this stuff, you get better game. Thanks for sticking with me uh, so far, guys. I'm, I really appreciate you all being here. Psychic entropy versus optimal experience. The more time you spend in motion, the more optimal experiences you will have. So this stuff is amazing because the more you do it, the better you get. And that in itself becomes a flow experience, going out and doing pickup. If you don't do it a lot or you don't put yourself into motion a lot, even if that's learning to play guitar, you it'll always be a bit of a struggle. It won't be that fun. But the more you do it, the less psychic entropy you have. So entropy is just a state of stagnation. And you know, when things aren't really happening, when your mind is not being engaged on a regular basis, it will just make it harder to hit state or hit flow. So a lot of guys ask me, how do I get into state? How do I stay in state? It's easy. You experience it more often. Think about that. How often do you experience motion? So you might go and play uh, after this presentation. You might fire up the PlayStation 
and you'll experience a bit of motion while you play your game for a little while. But at a certain point, uh, after you play that game long enough, you'll, you will stop improving. Your, your gains will be very marginal. And this happens to a lot of guys. People call it the dip. You know, you might be going to the gym a lot and you stop making gains because you've hit the dip. Um, and you hit psychic entropy. But if you stick with it and you start learning some new techniques, you may be, um, you know, with pickup, maybe instead of just always going direct, you start practicing indirect game. Instead of always coming in from the side, you start becoming a little bit more aggressive in the bar and going dancing. Like maybe you don't know how to dance. So you start trying something new and that puts you back into the optimal experience. And it's just a, it, it'll just grow. The more that you put yourself in these situations, the more enjoyable it becomes. Jedi mind tricks. Yeah. Okay, just, it all comes down to this. Man, just keep approaching more women. More, more, more. I know a lot of you guys in this seminar are not practicing as much as you should. And you're not going to get the results. Now, social circle game... That's another thing. A lot of guys, they, they, they go, well, I have a big social circle and I'm going to lots of social events and stuff. That's awesome. I think that's, if, if, if nothing, you should do that and your life will be okay with women. But if you want to be a Jedi, you're going to have to go through the trials of uh, hitting on thousands of them. Take rigorous notes all the time. Yeah, and focus on the experience rather than perfection. Yeah, this is something that I think us men, like we want to get from A to Z. That's the way our brains work. We are linear most of the time. Women have this amazing ability to sort of look at the nature of feelings inside of experiences. Whereas men are more like, how do I get the thing? What do I do? How come I don't have it yet? Now, I mean, even me creating this webinar, I'm like, I'm like, this picture isn't centered. I can't use it. Oh, you know, and no, I said, fuck it. I'm just going to get it up and enjoy the experience of putting on this webinar and entertaining a bunch of guys talking about game. And it turned out okay. So with pickup, guys, focus on the experience. Always stop beating yourself up. You guys beat yourself up so badly and it's not going to help you mentally. Mushin, the, the Jedi, they don't think like that. They just accept what's happening as an experience and they don't judge it. You don't ask why is this happening. You just experience it, and then you go and you take your notes and have have a fun life. Yeah, and and when you go out to practice, like look at Luke here hovering upside down on his hand with Yoda on his foot. Now this is one technique. He would have to practice that technique all day long for like a week. And you guys should do the same thing. You know, if you're working on Kino, just focus on Kino that day. Um, if you're going to go out and work on your verbal game techniques, like some of my stuff that I teach, sort of like insights, not observations. Instead of saying, I like your shoes, tell them why you like their shoes and tell them how their shoes tell you something about themselves. So you can cold read. So maybe just, just focus on cold reading that day. I'm just going to talk to five girls. And I'm going to try to do a cold read on every single one of them. This is how you will actually... Experience motion when you start to improve on one aspect of your game rather than just jumping into the fray and kind of chaotically going about your experience and not taking any notes and, and then coming home and not practicing again for another week and having no idea what you learned. Trust your intuition over strategy. Adapt and calibrate. So this goes back to kind of, this is almost like a paradox to what I just said. So on one hand, you should be practicing one or two techniques. And on the other hand, you shouldn't focus so much on your strategy. Some guys are like, I'm going to do 100 approaches this month or else. And they just kind of make this really intense schedule and they'll miss opportunities. Like a girl, so I've seen so many guys, they'll meet a girl and she wants to go for coffee or something. Like they could go for coffee with her but she's maybe like not the most beautiful girl. And they're like, I'd rather practice on my approaching because I'm working on my like left step back turn maneuver and they will miss out on this. Trust your intuition. You should go with that girl. Um, you know, you should try to kiss her maybe 
It's so vague, I know, but just saying. Be mindful of your positivity because the dark side is always just around the corner beckoning you. Now, I teach some of my advanced guys some dark some dark Jedi shit. Like, um, being mean to girls game. Like, uh, I have one blog post I wrote on my blog recently called Telling Hot Girls They're Fat. Now, you could be angry at a girl and then be like, "You're f- well, yeah, well, you're fucking fat. Like, I think I've read some pickup artist guy um, got busted. I think it was Jeffy or something, telling women they're fat out of anger. Now, being somewhat, saying somewhat mean things to some women can actually be really powerfully seductive. But I don't teach this stuff to newbies because they they might abuse it. I've seen it be abused. I've seen RSD shit be abused and used in the wrong way. But just be mindful of your positivity because the light side is always infinitely stronger than the dark. And and if you find yourself slipping into negativity a lot, meditation can help you with this too because I am one of those people. I am often slipping into depressions. And some days it's just a fucking battle all day long, all day long. And it makes it really hard to be this seductive, happy um, coach of life coaching and wisdom when you're like – pissed off that you don't have enough money you're pissed off that you don't have the girl you want or that you're getting flaked on or you're pissed off because you gained some weight when you were going you were in such good shape six months ago catch those thoughts become aware of them write it down that it's happening and 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 start working on the things you need to do to keep yourself happy because when you're positive you will you will have better results with women infinitely better results than if you're walking around in a negative haze and you can fix that stuff. You might not ever become the happy, positive, go-lucky character that you would like to be, but at least you can work at it. You can be better. Let go of knowing what to do. This is a huge thing for you, um, a lot of you guys, is that you need to know. You're, you always feel like you need to know the next step. That's part of the fun of the tunnel, the little straw running through, bashing yourself into everything. Because... You know, if you look at something like a military experience, um, I was in cadets. I wasn't in the military, but we've all seen movies, and you know they hate the new guy. It's not that people hate the new guy who comes into the the boot camp. It's that they know he's a new guy, and he's going to suck at everything, and it's almost laughable. But, you know, the new guy would go into a camp thinking, oh, the boot camp instructor's an asshole. The people that I'm involved with are, are losers. Whenever you come into a new new job or a culture, you're going to think these people are pretentious and they don't like you and whatnot until you've paid your dues. Um, and and you know you might want the exact blueprint, but it's better to just go into the deep end of the pool, often with a little bit of technique, but the rest of it just let it happen and be cool with everything negative about it. When I was having girls yelling at me, telling me I was an asshole and having boyfriends wanting to beat me up and, and, and you know, getting a girl home and having her naked and then and then not getting laid. Also, and I've had girls be like, well, I'll, you know, I don't want to fuck. And they're like naked. And these things that don't go right, just laugh it off, man. Just take it as an experience and, and, and it's cool that you don't know what to do because the experience will teach you what to do next time. Notice every new moment, man. This is something I do all day. Even walking down the road when I'm, I'm going through. Like today, I was walking down my street, and this is part of motion. It's being present, and I just looked at the house in front of me, and I thought, Jesus Christ, look at that house. They built that out of wood. Someone cut down a tree and they carved that wood and they painted it and they dug that hole and they they came along and they made those windows and they. Or, and they put a tree in the yard and then they planted the flowers. And I look at this house and I think that's amazing. And I never used to do that kind of stuff. It's not something I tell myself today I'm going to go and admire my scenery. But now that I, something about doing pickup for all these years, I, I really notice things. Even when I'm drinking a glass of water with lemon in it now, sometimes I'm like, wow, it's amazing that this lemon is in my water. And women will pick up on this. If you start living life this way and that you're noticing new things all the time, I've had people tell me you're kind of you're you're very innocent. You seem like almost like a like a child sometimes, not in a bad way. And uh, I think it's easy to become jaded, especially when you're becoming becoming older, and that you'll you will feel like you've done everything and there's nothing new. Well, trust me, there is an infinite amount of newness in in the world. 
um, and you just have to decide to notice it. Yeah, live like you're watching a movie about yourself. Enough said. Just think about that. Almost done. A few exercises. This is a really fun little game you guys can play to practice your uh, Jedi powers of influence, okay? So you might have seen that um, in the first Star Wars movie, he says, these are not the droids you're looking for. <laughs> and the, they go, okay, these aren't the droids we're looking for, and the stormtroopers just move on. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Take a piece of chalk. And if you don't have a piece of chalk, just find a little square of cement somewhere. And I saw this in a body language documentary called Body Language. I think it was called that body language on BBC. And just draw a box and do this on a busy intersection. I do it downtown on Granville Street sometimes or on Robson. And as people come, just say, stay out of my box. Stay out of my box. And I've tried this with a lot of students. And the student will come up and go, stay, stay out of my box. And, the, and no one will listen to that person, that guy. They'll just walk straight through the box. And and it's funny and then i'll try and if i'm in the right zone if i'm if i'm in state which isn't hard to it's not hard to get into state when you have a lot of experience with this stuff it's literally like be happy now that's it uh which is kind of funny how easy it is and how totally hard it is to get into that state but just try to get people not to walk in your box and when you when you start nailing it it's like it's like having jedi superpowers People will just go around your box and they'll look a little bit confused, but they'll just trust that you have authority because you're presenting yourself as an authority figure. And that doesn't mean you're mean. It's not like you're stay the fuck out of my box or I'll hurt you. It's just, it's just a, you're in a, if you're in a very calm state and you have good body language and you look serious, people will just assume you're serious. And if you can make this exercise work consistently, you can make girls stop on the street consistently without having to run in front of them and hold your hand up in front of them and say stop, which I think is a really cheap technique. Uh, I teach my guys to just open them from the side and they will stop just because, just because this person has the authority, the way they walk, the way they talk. Try it. Uncomfortable spaces. Um, yeah, so whenever you see something that you think would make you extremely uncomfortable socially, put yourself in that. So <laughs> you might be at a bar and you will see a set with one girl and 12 dudes. I want you to get into that set because that's the one that's going to make you grow the most. I remember I took one guy out and <laughs> there were all these roid monkeys. Like There were these huge guys. There was about six of them and this one big boob stripper looking girl. And it wasn't so much like, how do I get that stripper? I just told the guy I wanted him to go in and make friends with those big muscle bound meathead dudes. And he was, this guy had never even been in a nightclub, hardly ever. And he was so afraid. And we sat there for almost 15 minutes while he sweated and, and just told me about his life. And, and, you know, I eventually put him through a meditation and, and he said, okay. And he went in there and he talked to this big dude and the dude, poured him a drink of uh they were drinking water because they're all i don't know anyway he sat with them and he made friends with these guys and that was a huge growth experience so always find the most uncomfortable situation and put yourself in it embarrass yourself i get guys to stand up on top of uh light poles and hang off light poles and make monkey noises i know a lot of you guys that have worked with me a few of you in here have i made you do it and you hated it just getting up there and going like, hoo, hoo, ha, ha, ha. but, and you know, and, and if you aren't loud enough, then I make you loud enough and I'll do it myself until, until everyone on the street is looking and acknowledging that we are fools. And you'll notice that nobody really gives a shit and embarrassment is, it's, it's a really powerful way to, to increase your confidence because when you come out of that embarrassing situation and you realize nothing bad happened, uh, it increases your ability ability to express yourself. It increases your creativity. It will increase your self-confidence overall. So take time to embarrass yourself once in a while on purpose. The five high five game. I told you about that. Just go out, give yourself a time limit, and try to get five high fives. Two minutes for five high fives. It's really hard for some people, which I find hilarious. Uh, if you come out with me, I'll make you do it, and you'll learn a lot from that game. Massive immersion. That's not really an exercise. That just means practice a lot. Meditate before going out. Um, 
there's a great course online. Check it out. It's called mc2method.org. So that's uh, I'll write I'll send you a link later if you guys want it. But just mc2method.org. It's a really easy meditation program. It's a good start. But I meditate before I go out, and what I do is I use visualization techniques. I imagine my night before it happens, or I imagine my day before it happens. But I don't imagine what might happen. I imagine that it's already happened. So you experience you experience what it's like to be successful in the game. You experience what it's like to connect with a woman and have her just eating up everything you say. You experience even the bad things. You might experience the rejections and see that it's not that bad. But you do this all inside your mind. You simulate it, and it prepares your mind for the real experience. It's incredibly powerful. Yeah, relying on state as an excuse. Now, a Jedi, in order to defeat a Sith, has to be totally in state. I mean, but if he's not, he still has to fight. Like, it's not like Darth Vader would show up and Luke would just go, Oh, shit, you know what? I'm not really feeling the force today, bro. Uh, I think I'm going to go home and watch some Walking Dead. No, because he would just get chopped in half. Think of it the same way when you're going out to do your, your game. You might feel, I've gone out with, with a strep throat. I picked up a girl with strep throat, and I wouldn't make out with her because I didn't want to give her strep throat, and she thought that I was playing hard to get. True story. Brazilian girl. And I... And, um, I ended up sucking on her neck and she were, we sucked on each other's necks and stuff. Um, so many guys are like, well, you know, I just don't feel up for it tonight. It's called resistance. It's, 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 if you're not eating right, if you're not exercising, if you don't have good shit going on in your life that makes you feel proud of yourself, you're not going to feel that worthy in the first place of going out. And you'll, a lot of guys use this as an excuse. And this never happened until RSD came out with the concept into this community before the idea of state it was all routines and gimmicks and stuff but these guys were going out because they had the routines they didn't have this idea that if they weren't in state then they weren't going to be any good it's totally not true you get into state you find motion by doing you hit flow by doing flow is called the psychology of optimal experience right it's experience it's not the psychology of thinking about experience that's the conundrum so how do you defeat the resistance just to go out and do something if you don't feel like it meditation again it's so simple sit down for 20 minutes get yourself into a trance and if you guys want to learn more about this stuff just let me know maybe i'll write another blog post or you can hire me for phone coaching or take a boot camp but anyway you imagine yourself going out that night and you and even if you're supposed to go out in 10 minutes and you don't want to go just imagine what the night would look like how awesome it would be how much fun you would have see yourself getting up putting on your shoes putting on your clothes going to the bus stop or whatever going downtown going to the club having fun and when you come out of your trance it'll be so easy to actually do it to actually get up and go and yeah, read this book called The War of Art. The War of Art is a really amazing, amazing book for entrepreneurs, artists, musicians, pickup artists, whatever you want to do. If you struggle with resistance, read this book and combine that with meditation and you will get so much shit done that you weren't able to do in the past just because you learned how to deal with the resistance. Enjoyment and quality of life. So there's two ways to enjoy because if you have like a, a really enjoyable life and you have a high quality life, it will not be hard for you to hit flow, to hit state. Um, it just makes things easier. There's two strategies. You know, you can either change the external conditions of your life or you can modify how you experience the conditions. So, you know, you might be driving to work and and you've been having troubles with your boss lately, you don't like the girl sitting next to you, uh, then you pop a tire and you're going to be late and you've been late a few times this week because you weren't prepared, you didn't have something prepared and so shit's just falling apart and you get there and it sucks. Now, if you had actually had your shit together and you had used your motion to Make sure your tires were taken care of because you had gone to the auto mechanic 
a uh, week before like you should have or you learned how to maintain your car for yourself and actually done what you need to do if you had your shit at work in order because you you actually enjoy your job you you would not have this problem so you can't you know like say you're afraid of the outside world if you have agoraphobia you could lock yourself in a cell and hire armed guards to protect you but you still wouldn't feel safe you would still feel like you might get a cold or something on the other hand you could throw yourself naked into the forest and you could say like well i have meditation i'm going to be fine you can't rely on one or the other you want to combine them Neither is ideal. We must be on the ball, adapting both external situations and conditioning our minds and bodies in order to deal with both positive and negative states, conditions, and experiences. Right? So you're going out to do some pickup. You're going out to do some game. You can't control the environment. But I know that if I go out on a sunny day, there's a good chance people are going to be happier. That's why I prefer sunny days. But if it's raining, I use my umbrella as a prop. Oh, you know, here's an umbrella. Let me keep you dry, young woman. Uh, and I actually will do this more for my own. Oh, I like to go out on sunny days more for my own happiness than other people's. But if it's raining, I will appreciate. I'll appreciate the rain. I'll I'll think like, wow, it's amazing that this water is cleaning the city for us. It's making everything new and fresh. And this gives me a chance to wear my new scarf, right? You have the power to control how you see reality. And a lot of guys, they're really giving up to the external conditions, the power to dictate how they see reality. But learning game, you have to be able to take a bad situation and turn it into a positive over and over and over. Everything has to be turned into a positive. You have that power. Here's some infield motion. We're almost done this seminar here, guys. If you have an anxiety attack on the street, you are definitely not a Jedi. And so, you know, um, if you watch the Star Wars episode, whatever, where they're trying to kill that Sith with the dual lightsabers, and they get trapped behind Darth Maul, and they get trapped behind the force fields, this is like the, the terrible Star Wars that had really awesome action scenes. But he stopped and he got down on his knees, and he meditated when he had some time. And a lot of guys, I have to teach them this when they're in field. So infield motion, pick a spot, any spot on a wall, breathe deeply through your nose, breathe out through your mouth three times, just three deep breaths while looking at that one spot. Let your thoughts float past you. Don't hold on to it because you're going to have this anxiety coming up like, oh, people are looking at me. I look dumb staring at this one spot. Oh, the girl, you know, all that stuff. Just let it float past you. Just focus on that spot. Don't, don't hold on to your thoughts. Then just think this, feel good, feel good, feel great. And just keep repeating that to yourself while you focus on this one spot. And this will, what this will do, if you repeat it as long as you need to, your heart rate will lower. And when your heart rate lowers, that monkey running that wheel in your head will slow down. And you'll regain your faculties and you'll come back to the state of motion again. Uh, and then you can go back into the game. You can go back into the set. A lot of people, they let their anxiety dictate their night. And they let it overpower them. When all it, it re And they, they call it not knowing what to say. Now, verbal game is definitely something that you can learn. And words do matter because you can walk up to somebody and say, hi, I think you're pretty. Or you can walk up to somebody and say, did you see that fight outside? Or you can walk up to somebody and say, I think you're a fucking asshole and I want to punch your girlfriend. Like there are consequences to your words, but it all comes back to um, you, you, you can also control how you feel and how you think, right? And if you are able to slow that monkey mind, that monkey chatter and slow your heart rate through meditation like this, then you can go back out and have a good time again. You don't have to go home because you're too afraid. That is something I learned from a very famous uh, hypnotist who is in the game. Um, so keep it, use it. Work like a Padawan. Okay. Trust the process of the transformation. Just trust that if you do the work, you will get the results. And enjoy learning. Like, if you were going to become a Jedi, you would love getting your lightsaber. You would love going to practice. It wouldn't be something like, when am I going to be a Jedi? That's how Anakin fucked himself over, was because he just wanted to be a Jedi. So he went dark side. And look what happened. He lost his testicles and ended up um, 
getting zapped by the emperor. Study books on ego, like A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle and The Power of Now. Those are two of the best books I've ever read on ego. And if you learn that, you will learn how to control your internal chatter. You will learn how to clear your mind and you will become a better martial artist, a better whatever, because you're able to focus because you understand how your brain works. Meditate. Practice a lot. Force yourself to speak up and stand out whenever possible. Like the humble ladies man doesn't really exist in a sense that you can be humble, but I, I should say the quiet, shy ladies man. You know, some some guys they they go well, well Tony. I don't really want to become this extroverted person who stands out, and I, and I say, well, then maybe you don't want to have sex. Okay, so. Just to get good at this shit, you really have to make yourself into the shiny thing. You go to a party, try to become the person that when you're talking, everyone's listening to you. When you do day game, try to be the person when you walk left, she follows you. You want to stand out. You want to speak up. You want to be seen and heard. Laugh a lot. The more you laugh, the better. This shit is funny. Like, um... Learning anything should be fun, not a terrible, horrible experience. Even if it's like, if if I got a job and I had to clean out toilets for a, a job, I would find a way to make it funny. I would laugh about the absurdity of it. I might not fully enjoy it, but I would try to find my flow state while scrubbing people's uh, crap out of old toilets. Uh, you have to laugh when it comes to pick up. So many guys, they go out and they take this shit so seriously, man. It's like, ugh. I have to get the game and they wonder why they're not really getting results. You know, I, you want to be able to make girls laugh as well as yourself. It's, it's hilarious. Anyway, the whole process, it's totally ridiculous. Dabble in the dark side, but don't become it. Right? So, you know, if you're getting into this stuff and you're a young guy, it is a path to debauchery. I mean, I've been really, debaucherous not as debaucherous as a lot of my friends a lot of my friends get into swinging and kink and and all kinds of uh stuff or they just sleep with a lot of women and treat them kind of badly and don't call them back and i mean it's up to you however you want to however you want to be i think there's nothing wrong in dabbling with the dark side i'm really fascinated by zombie movies i mean i sometimes teach like negs i guess you could call them but you know, like sometimes I think it's funny to tell a girl she's a bitch. For some reason, it makes them want to, if it's done in a playful way, you're like, oh, you're a fucking bitch. Then some girls will be like, well, you're an asshole. And then you start playing and you're teasing and maybe now you're tickling each other. Like it's you can do this sort of dark side game in a fun way that isn't really mean. But sometimes you have to actually put somebody in their place just because not even a girl, maybe it's a subordinate at work who's not doing their job. And you have to show a little bit of anger, show a little bit of authority, but that increases your respect. This kind of stuff, you want to dabble in it, because if you, but not become it. Like you don't want to become a Sith Lord. You don't want to be that evil boss, that abusive boyfriend, because some people will let you abuse them, and they will love you for it. And you have to recognize that that isn't healthy. Yes. Now go forth, young Jedi. I hope I've helped you a little bit and given you a little bit of information here at my free webinar. May the force be with you.